Hey YouTube. So in one of my other videos, I mentioned how this uh, Benjamin 397S has been holding air. So I called uh, Crossman and asked them, uh, told them about the problem. They suggested that I shoot it, dry fire it six times. The air valve might be holding air. I doubted that was the case, but I will go through that process anyway. And then we're going to disassemble the gun and I'll show you the striker, which is the hammer spring. And um, I believe it's from the help of viewers that it's weak and that's what's causing the problem. But let me show you, even now it's six pumps that holds air. Okay, it's a dry fire empty. Hear that air? Then nothing. So we'll follow here. I'll do it again. Look at that. Holding air at six pumps. Okay. I'm going to shoot again. Two. Three. Four. Five. So there's, there's no more out air, definitely no air in the valve. Let's go take this apart and show you what's inside. Okay, so first step, you know, we shot it. We know that it doesn't have any air in it. We'll remove the stock. You need a large Phillips screwdriver. There's a Phillips head bolt right here, or screw. And surprisingly enough, that's the only thing holding the stock on the gun. I like to do is I have a magnet and I also have a towel just to kind of help catch the screws so I don't have less of a tendency to, to lose anything. Oh, let's pop this open. There we go. And you can remove your scope if you want. Um, I'm not going to. So there's the stock, it's off. The reason you wanna open your air valve is so it doesn't have any pressure on this fitting here. Okay, so next step, we will need to remove my bolt. So you take these screws out right here. See, so you, have you have the two screws, you have a cover plate, and it's got a beveled surface. Make sure the smooth surface is on the outside. You also have another piece that has a um, 90 degree bend to it. So this piece goes, goes in underneath and the Allen bolt style head on the bolt rides against it you can actually shim this for, or you can put this more forward to try to get a tighter seal here in the breach at the uh in the breach all right then you need to get an allen wrench you want to make sure you have a good quality one but anyway it's an american size so don't lose that screw and your bolt just comes out. All right, now we have a screw here. <laughs> another, another screwdriver, Phillips head. And while I have the gun here, this is a 7 sixteenths. You gotta undo this. I'm just gonna loosen that up. Let's take this screw out. Okay, now we have to pull this fitting off. 
this fitting actually threads. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's because it's under spring tension. So really, that's it. There's your hammer spring. So I put a small washer in there to shim it. And then that wasn't enough. It was still holding air. I've already had this apart once. And basically, you guys want to see the hammer. This is the hammer. And when you squeeze the trigger, the striker goes forward, hits on the stem on the air valve, and that's what actually makes the gun work. So... A little bit of oil on there. It was dry from the factory, and I'd read different things about lubing it, not lubing it. It seems to move without a lot of resistance. So I'd read in some of the comments I'd read, guys were saying you could put Molly lube on it. I don't happen to have any. I was thinking of spraying silicone in there, but we'll see. So I got to measure this. So let me do that. Okay, so I measured the spring length and it's 57 millimeters long or two and a quarter inches long. And then for diameter, I measured seven millimeters using this drill gauge. It won't go into the 1964ths hole, but it'll, it's a little bit sloppy in the five and sixteenths hole. So yeah, just uh, it's in between 1964ths and 516ths. So what I'm wondering to do, do I cut this? I'm trying to find, I'm gonna see if Crossman will just send me a new spring. Um, I'm having a heck of a time finding a replacement. Seems like everybody's sold out. But since the gun doesn't really shoot well, I don't know the harm of me cutting. What if I cut? one or two coils off it. And then I could space it out in here to get it back for the length and then it'll be stiffer. So if you cut a coil spring down, it actually makes it stiffer. So I think I'm gonna try that. So what I've read about springs if you think about it in the engine of your vehicle, your valve springs, a lot of times they're compressed. They don't wear out. Um, it's the cycling that uh, wears a spring out and some one or these just aren't, isn't a very high quality spring. And the short time I've had it, I've shot the gun a lot and I wore the spring out. Yeah, let's just, uh, let's cut it here and see what happens. And how will that, whatever, close enough. Um, I'm just kind of curious. You no, know, it sticks out. Maybe I'll just put it back together the way it is and we'll test it out and see. I'm gonna go ahead and put this washer in here again. It'll take up a minuscule amount of the room. Now, when you put this back together, you gotta make sure, let me show you. In the actual hammer, there's a hole. So make sure this end, or your gun's not gonna work, you put it in backwards. Uh, make sure that the spring goes into the hole. All right, so I've got that. Oh, that washer. There we go. Hold it. Do to do. Just gonna tighten that down by hand. Let's get the other guy. Yeah, initially I was I was, I was intimidated to work on this gun because I had experiences in the past with uh uh, some BB pistols and a CO2 um, 
gun that I took apart to, it was semi-auto and there was a thing. I did this like, I don't know, 18 years ago. You can make it full auto and anyhow, springs went flying everywhere. And never did find some of the springs and the safety quit working. And But this, thankfully, is very nice and easy to work on. All right. Another video I watched, they said, so this, this fitting here, it's really skinny. I'll just show you. And hopefully nothing moves around. I don't really want to lose it if something shifts. Anyway, this is threading into your air valve it's not it's not very big it's not a very big diameter it's threading into brass so you can easily over torque it so you just want to be careful you don't need to reef down on it so i'm holding my wrench way down here just so i don't put a lot of leverage on it that's snug i'm gonna leave it like that okay so now we got to put the bolt back in, flip it over once more. Okay. So note the orientation of your bolt handle. And then you're going to be, you've got that threaded hole. And it goes. And there's my threaded hole. Oh, I thought that was magnetic. Yeah, one thing, like if you're used to working on cars or uh, dirt bikes, four-wheelers, snow machines, that type of thing, um, yeah, the size of all the fasteners is so tiny on air guns that it's it's different. The mechanics, you know, it's kind of it's similar, but it's different. All right, so then we're going to put this piece in. Note the ninety degree angle sits in there, and then it actually is shimmed or not shimmed, it's got movement forward and back. So I'm gonna press this forward. That would cock it, so slide that forward. And then this piece, again, note, ah. Can you see how it's got the See, it's got the smooth surface to the outside. That's what goes here. And then these little tiny screws. And I actually stripped one of these out when I was putting a Baker scope mount out. They were Phillips head screw. And um, I didn't have the right bit and I stripped it out. So I went with, the, I took the straight slot screws out of my Benjamin 392 and put them in this. So I'm gonna snug those up. All right, let's see if the thing works. Hey, look at that. All right, one more screw left. No, no leftover parts, right? Give it a little hammer hammer.
Let's get the skirt in. So that's one thing I noticed about this. Um, guys, some guys were saying they don't recommend holding on to the grip while you pump it. They, you know, have your hand over the breech. And that makes sense to me because you figure you're, you're leveraging here and it does fit pretty snugly, but this screw is going into that threaded fitting right in your air valve. I mean, it works, but it'd be nice if it was a little, everything was a little bit uh, more secure. All right, so we had a pump in it. Ooh, look at that. It works, no leftover parts. There you go, and let's go uh, see if this thing, well, I can do it right here. See if it holds air. Six pumps. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, that didn't fix it. Well, so that's too bad. I don't think I want to cut that spring down any shorter. I guess I could. Well, anyway, there's how you disassemble it. I'm going to see if I can source a different spring. Um, thought I'd try it out, see if I could improve anything. But it doesn't appear that I did. Um... Maybe, maybe there's something else going on. I don't know. If you guys have thoughts, please share them in the comments below. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.